Play my music. Let's get into this. Welcome back, everybody. Friday night. Got some nuts in my teeth. <laughs> Dave's over there high behind a the microphone, picking the pubes out of his teeth. Because he was over there eating some nuts. Eating some of his nut. Ah, oh, man. It's getting loose tonight. Let's do it. What are you doing out there, people? I'm drinking again. Yeah, I'm on the podcast. I've been drinking, but just not on the podcast. But you know what? What? These last two weeks, bro, they, they, they were stressing me out. Really? I got... I got I got adult, some adult beverages. It was a uh, sigh, sigh of relief for me. I, w- I was relieved. Well, I just mean stressing me out because of... Uh, I didn't have an outlet to talk about it. Oh, 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 oh. And you know what? Since you're in a new building now, I can't even voice... I know. Your wife doesn't even, listen to you? I can't even talk to you in the mornings like we normally do. Like, yo, can you believe this? You believe this happened last night? Yeah, man. What'd you just say? It's crazy. All right. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Orangeman <laughs> podcast. Dave and Clint here with you on yes, a Friday night. Yes. Welcome to episode two. Not sure what the name is, but it's going to be right there on the board. Thank you for watching. We appreciate you. Yeah. Showing up, we'll show up if you show up. We're Share with all here. your liberal friends and all your degenerate friends and your deplorable friends that libtards like to enjoy an adult adult beverage or two, maybe three or four, and uh, talk some shit. Let's go. Listen, overall, in the grand scheme of things, we're just two working. Guys, what did you just say? That have regular jobs. Hmm. Do we? We, talk, we we try to find some clips for the week, some stuff. And uh, listen, if you don't like the direction of the country like we don't, then come along board with us. You know what I mean? Hop on the train. Hop on the Orange Men train. Let's go. <laughs> the Orange Men. Sorry, I'm just being. Belly. Stupid. Stupid. So, oh. All right. So where do you want to go? You're you hurt my feelings, man. You what do you talk say? I'm, not, I'm smart. I'm not stupid like everybody says. <laughs> I don't know, man. Let's, uh, what do you want to do? You want to play these Joe Biden 118th Congress clips? Yeah. All right. Let's, let's see what all the hubbub's about. What's all the hubbub? The- Bub? I just hope. Kind of like what you were saying on the last episode. All right, we got we got the house. I don't care. I mean, I know every day it's like, oh, we're one up, we're down, one down. We're back up, we're back down. Yeah, well, we might slow the train down a little bit, but. No, I'm just saying, like, it's like, it's 218, now it's 216. It's 218, now 219, now it's 215. Like, the more ballots we find as the month progresses. Are we going to go on? Like, how are we right, still not, ca- I know, but. Let's not talk about ballots anymore. How let's are we still on. counting votes? Because the system is corrupt. <laughs> the week before, what more do you need? The week before Thanksgiving. Well, what more do you need? I know. It's just frustrating. It's corrupt. Corruption at its best. Like, when are, when are they even going to be like, all right, we lost it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Even well, still, they're like, we got to keep holding on. Well, look, look at this FTX thing. You want to get into that? Well, I we'll mean, do, yeah, we'll, well, we'll do that after, but. No, I'm going to do it now. Oh, all right. Well, I. I've been well, paying fresh, attention. It's fresh in my mind. This kid is a creep. Yes. He's a psychopath. Well, is he He's a psychopath? A, at, le- at least a sociopath. Well, I think he um, was a propped up. But how did he even. How placeholder. Did, did he create big, this this crypto? What, what, well, it's what, not a crypto. Well, it's, what is it? It's an exchange. So what it is, is it's where people can buy and sell like, all right, let's say, you, what are you, a Coinbase guy? Mm-hmm. All right, so it's like a Coinbase where you can go in, buy, and sell your, your cryptos. Now, I think there is like an FTX token, kind of like Coinbase. I think Coinbase has a coin, too. Or I know Crypto.com has a coin. It's a CT. I forget what Crypto.com coin is. But 
FTX is an exchange where you buy and sell and you keep it, you know, you, you, you're, if you want to buy Bitcoin, you buy Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, the whole gamut of whatever cryptos you, you are into. So what was happening was, uh, I mean, this guy in 2019 is when this popped up, like the, the FTX, uh, exchange. You had like Tom, like Tom Brady, uh, Kevin uh, from the Hart. Shark Tank. Who's no, uh, not Kevin Hart. Well, he might have been guys. Mr. Too. Wonderful. Yeah, Mr. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, Giselle was up. Like you had all these stars, so to speak, that were propping this guy up. Now, remember the SEC guy Gary Gensler went after Kim Kardashian because she was a paid sponsor of this coin. So they're like, "Well, are, uh, are you going to go after these people?" And it's like. Nah, he's not doing it, but there's a class action lawsuit against a, a shit ton, like a list of Larry, <coughs> Larry David. Yeah. Larry yeah. David's on the list. Like there's a whole bunch of celebrities. They're like, Hey, you influenced me to buy into this product, this Ponzi scheme. So, so were they really, I, I mean, think the money was there. I just, it's, it's, I, mean, I don't know how you sell that stuff anyway. I, it's, I don't understand it. So I don't, I don't even it's wanna, a coincidental my, pro my problem with the whole thing is the guy became an overnight billionaire. Well, everybody was talking about how he's the face of crypto and... The new JP Morgan. Yeah. Because he showed... Well, we, we, because they... But it's funny how he's not going to get in a lick of trouble because he's been a Democrat donor the whole time. Well, that's he's, that's he's my the, problem. He's the second biggest donor behind George Soros in this uh, last two election cycles, 2020 and this one. He's promoted... He's, he's donated 26 million dollars between both parties now it's not uh, most of them are democrats but between both parties I, I have a list of i don't think i sent it to you but there's like i have a it's like five or six uh republicans so it's between both parties but he was he gave joe biden five million dollars so like you know a couple of crypto guys i watch on youtube they were like oh well this ftx guy ceo has backed Joe Biden. So Joe Biden, they thought was going to be crypto friendly. It was kind of like their, their thing, but here it is after the, <laughs> after the midterms, you know, this whole thing collapses, you know what I mean? And it's like this big, basically this is bigger than Bernie Madoff and, and, uh, and like the Enron deal. Like this is just another big Ponzi screen. He, they were also donating. You could donate for uh Ukraine, got involved with this guy too. So what they're saying is we're shipping money. Now hear me out. <laughs> we're shipping money to Ukraine. Ukraine's turning around and investing into FTX or coins. Staffers, because they're not licensed and you don't really recognize who they are, are buying coins or selling coins on FTX and bringing that money back in and then just redistrib redistributing. Distributing. Distributing, what is it? Redistributing. Redistributing to their people that they work for within yeah. Congress or the House. Well, that's why that's why we funded Ukraine all this time. Yes, and so we were for this guy lost forty billion dollars, and then what was it? Thursday, Wednesday, or Thursday of this week? Joe Biden's like, we need another thirty-seven point five billion for Ukraine. Eh. <laughs> that's interesting. But also, we got to build FTX. Elizabeth up. Warren, who, well, no, they just need to cover their losses. But there, there are actual like people just like you and me that were using that exchange that may have used it, and they didn't. Have, they have coins on there, and again, if, if you're on, if you're into crypto, have a hardware wallet. I'm not, you know, what I mean, like it's, it's a whole big, it's it's a hassle. But, well, I already lost all my money. But so you have to pull your 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 coins, so to speak, even though it's in thin air. You have to pull them off of the exchanges just for this reason. You saw it with, I mean, you know, Terra Luna. You saw it with a couple other ones. Celsius, I think, fucking shit the bed. If uh, Tether, which is backed, you know, the Bitcoin Tether, if that goes down, then we're... Well, we're, it's hanging on by a thread right now. Yeah, but it also might be part of the program because they're trying to get rid of all these people that, well, I'm, I'm not going to get involved in crypto anymore because I'm scared to lose all my money. So you're shaking these people out, right or wrong. 
think but that's like what's a, going on. No, I don't think I'm not, it could be part of it. I mean, I I don't know. You never know. But it's also like they keep on shitting on on the the crypto stuff. But yet behind the scenes, all these banks and stuff. I don't know if you probably didn't see it, but like uh, there's like 12 big banks that are getting ready to start. A, they're going to do like a, a six week or a 12 week program of uh, USDC. Just running it through their system, which is the United States uh, digital coin or digital dollar. So that's interesting. Like, why would you do that if you weren't going to push it forward? You know what I mean? Like this stuff's all going on behind the scenes. We just I think. I just think this dude, like, he was he was also, he had a venture capitalist thing, too. Like, on top of it, he had, like, his own little, like, uh, like BlackRock firm that was trading and stuff. So, he was taking money from FTX and then going, moving it over here and doing his own thing. And it just fell apart. And then he posts on Twitter, like, I'm sorry, I should have done better and I learned my lesson. Like, <laughs> oh, okay. That shit doesn't matter, bro. It doesn't, you, it doesn't get anybody's money back. And, you know, I... I well, feel bad worry, for the people that lost their money. The but politicians will give it all back. No, they won't. Sure, because they, they don't care. Don't. But like Elizabeth, oh, so like wonderful. Elizabeth Warren's daughter works for Gary Gensler as an intern, uh -huh. mm -hmm. which is the SEC chairman, who was also Gary Gensler. If you go back to 2016, was the CFO of Hillary Clinton's campaign. So he was running all the money behind her deal. He funded the Steele dossier. <sighs> He funded all this Russian disinformation that we know happened. So this dude is now, that's what I mean. Like it's a big corrupt circle of fucking assholes. Mm -hmm. And the more and more people dig and find out, it's like, wow, these, these people are all connected. I think Bankman, uh, Sam Bankman Freed's father or, or mother wrote, no, it was his father wrote the tax code for Elizabeth Warren in 2016. So the, the mom was a, a, a Democratic PAC donor. Like, they, they're these Democrats. They, listen, they're all dirty motherfuckers. And they've been stealing money, like we've been saying. And unfortunately, kind of like what we've been saying, there's one dude that's been calling them all out. And I saw a great video where the guy's yep. like, if you were a CEO of a company, like, fresh in, you know, and they were like, they, you knew there was corruption. You found it. You had evidence. And then all they did was smear you for a year and make you look bad in front of all the employees, all the other CEO, you know, the board members and stuff. And then they ousted you. And you're like, I'm just trying to do what was best for the company. But all these corrupt individuals down to the janitor who was getting fucking kickbacks is fighting me on it because they want their money. They got to keep the power, like you said. It's all about money and power. And these Democrats don't want to give it up. And they definitely don't want to let any outsiders in, regardless of where you're at, whether it's in the House or the, you know, the Senate. Because once you start looking into it, it's disturbing. Yeah. And it's corrupt. Very corrupt. And here's some more corrupt people saying they're going to get rid of, <laughs> do an investigation on the other corrupt people. Well, they're, Biden crime family is one of the most corrupt people. The investigation reveals a family that engaged with some of America's most powerful adversaries, planning to sell one of the largest sources of cobalt for electric vehicles in the world to the Chinese, for example. The Bidens flourished and became millionaires by simply offering access to the family. Among the dozens of shell companies the Bidens set up, there were millions of dollars of wire transfers, flights on Air Force Two, to conduct personal business and meetings with heads of state all while Joe Biden was aware of what was happening. All the while, he turned a blind eye. Many transactions related to these businesses have raised red flags at U.S. banks. A suspicious activity report, or SAR, is a document a bank must file with the Treasury Department when a transaction is suspected to be related to money laundering or fraud or other types of criminal activity. According to media reports, the Biden family accumulated over 150 SARs. One SAR generated by an American bank to the Treasury Department connects Hunter Biden and his business associates to international human trafficking, among other illegal activities. The money that? that was being made from foreign principals in the same room as Joe Biden was increasingly spent on furthering. You got to be kidding me. That's part one. 
Yeah, it's... We're releasing a report today that details what we've we uncovered. <laughs> We're also sending letters to the Biden administration officials and Biden family associates renewing our request for voluntary production of documents relevant to this investigation. This is an investigation of Joe Biden, the president of the United States, and why he lied to the American people about his knowledge and participation in his family's international business schemes. National security interests require the committee conduct investigation, and we will pursue all avenues, avenues that have long been ignored. Committee Republicans have uncovered evidence of federal crimes committed by and to the benefit of members of the president's family. These include conspiracy or defrauding the United States, wire fraud, conspiracy to commit wire fraud, violation of the Foreign Agents Registration Act, violations of the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, violations of the Trafficking Victims Protection Act, tax evasion, money laundering, and conspiracy to commit money laundering. The Biden family's business dealings implicate a wide range of criminality from human trafficking to potential violations of the Constitution. In the 118th Congress, this committee will evaluate the status of Joe Biden's relationship with his family's foreign partners and whether he is a president who is compromised or swayed by foreign dollars and influence. I want to be clear. This is an investigation of Joe Biden, and that's where the committee will focus in this next Congress. I now turn... There you go. I don't know that it's going to mean anything about anything, but yeah, that was just the other day. So when he says the next Congress, that's the one that is sworn in in January, whatever, 20th or 20 January 6th. No, no, it's not that. Oh. I forget when the, the new Congress kicks in. I, I posted it on a, on our Instagram. Okay. But yeah, I mean, and again, I know, like you said, like, I'm not where it, it I'm not, this shit is, you can't tell me this guy's not dirty. Did you see him in, in Trudeau in Ch in Indi Indonesia? Nope. Where they were wearing the, uh, uh, Jing Jing, whatever, Zing Jing Peas, uh, Jing Jing Pang Chang, little, Jing Jing Pang Little Pong. Chinese shirt that he wears. Fling Jing Chang Pao. Like the Mao shirt, like, dude, these two guys. Did they wear sandals too? Little, pro little pro clogs. Probably. But even like. They look like geisha girls. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, it's so frustrating because... You want washy-washy? And I agree with you. It, I didn't say anything. No, 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 I'm saying like what you said earlier. Ooh. I hope this guy and this committee comes with the sauce, man. Like, I don't, I'm tired of the, the, of the talk, the rhetoric. It all sounds great. I'm all for it. Let's... And kind of like what you were saying, like the Democrats got two impeachment procedures to get to the Senate. You know what I mean? So we need to have that kind of vitriol going forward in these next six months, eight months. I want to see, I want to see fucking this dude, his son. I want to see like all uh, Jim Biden. You know what I mean? Like we know they're all corrupt. They're corrupt down here in Delaware. You know what I mean? They, it's a dirty fucking family. We know it. The country should know it. And I, to be honest, how you don't know it by now? Is kind of well, disrespectful because they're blind to it. They, the guy's been in. They don't know it. They don't. The guy's been third. What's it? Thirty-seven they're years. They're blinded now? by hatred and fear. Yeah, but they. That's all you need. Joe Biden. Nobody liked Joe Biden before Trump. You know what I mean? Like, if if there wasn't, and like you've said before, like that's the big bad fucking. That's the big bad like enemy, and it's not like Joe. Nobody liked Joe Biden before because he was. He was he was hard on crime with the community, mm -hmm. African Americans, Black Americans. He was hard on Latinos. You know what I mean? Like he was hard on crack. He was hard on marijuana. He he didn't want them in his schools. He didn't want his kids around them. But yet, Trump's bad. <laughs> like it makes no sense, man. The people out there are deranged and brainwashed. And Well, they're definitely brainwashed. I would have to go with my man Malcolm X here. And but you go, can't brain you can't brainwash somebody <laughs> unless you have them in fear. You 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 have to you have to. Um, I agree with you. Control their emotions before you can control their mind. Well, that's the sad part. One of the guys we work with, he said that about a bunch of guys, like a bunch of the people. Like you're you vote emotionally. Like yeah, take take the politics and. 
the rhetoric aside, are you happy with the direction of the country? Well, forget about the country. Just are you happy with what you what you're seeing in your neighborhood? Well, your yeah, well, your life, your like your day to day life, like and that's part of the problem. We take these elections, all these local elections, we take them national, and people vote nationally for things that aren't even affecting them in their local. own local. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you got people who should be focused on, you know, people in Philly should be voting against crime and corruption and, and drug deaths and all that other stuff, but school, they don't. Yeah, the school board and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, they're right. They're too busy voting on abortion. So to Sunday, so we did our show on Sunday. I, I, drove, yeah. my, I, drove, our, I drove my daughter back to Temple. She's a Temple student. So I'm going down Broad Street. Every poll, <laughs> like from us, like in the North Philly, down the Temple, where I where I busted my U turn. Mm -hmm. Every poll in the center, street light poll on the right, probably on the left, coming back up. I didn't really notice because I was so dejected. <laughs> but every every poll said, "Vote against racism. Vote November eighth. Don't vote for racists. Vote November eighth." And it's like, that's a no brainer. That's the mindset. Like yep. you're saying that they've put into people like, and it's in North Philly. So guess what, what community lives in North Philly? Now, I don't know how many, how many people in North Philly actually vote or don't vote. I would hope that they vote because they should be voting against kind of what you just said, the crime, because they're the most affected by it. Nope. They're voting against racism, but it's because you've been told Boom, boom, beating in your head. You're driving down the light poles. Boom, boom, boom. Vote against racists. Vote against racists. They weren't there the week before when I drove her home on a Sunday. But the following Sunday, they were there. Because I don't know. If you ever drive down Broad Street, now if you're in Philly, you'll understand Not anymore. this. But there's like these red, like tall, red, like towers, light towers in the center median. And it every one of those polls had vote against racism, vote November 8th. Don't vote for racist. Vote November November eighth, and I'm like, hmm. Yo, this is infuriating because, and I think I t I think I told you like the one day I was working on a Saturday, and like the one guy was listening to the uh, the uh, African American channel, <laughs> the R and B station, and it was like every commercial was against Doug Mastriano and how he's on Gab promoting white nationalism and racism, and it's like, no, he's no, he wasn't. But if you hear that fucking 10 times a day while you're driving around in your car, you you're going to go, well, this Doug Mastriano guy is clearly, He's clearly a fucking a Nazi. Uh -huh. And people fall for it because they don't know any better because they're not listening. Listen, kind of like what you said too earlier where we've just, I've been hyper focused on this since like Trump came involved, like 2016, 2017. I've kind of been, like you said, agnostic about it. I voted a direction. You know what I mean? Like, I like what this guy thought. I like what this guy was doing. I like this guy's rhetoric. I, You know, I understood what he was talking. Like, like Josh Shapiro, I, I voted for the dude because he's like, I want to get rid of opioids. And it's like, nah, you didn't do that. And now I got to I gotta get rid of you. Like, you didn't talk about, like, the shit you were talking about in 2016, you didn't do. You didn't even touch it. You were all about getting rid of drugs, and it's worse now than it was in 2016. And it's probably going to get worse because you really don't care. And it's expanding from, like, just Philly out into... And it's not just the white kids. It's everybody that's being affected by the op opioids and, and heroin. And, like, it's not just a class of people anymore. It's everybody. And yet... They want to make it like it's, oh, you only care because it's, the, no, I, it's not that. I just, it, crime needs to stop. The drugs need to stop and people need to do better. Is that so hard to ask for? No. <laughs> Is it? But I, but I, I, I wanted to say that your signs didn't, the signs didn't work. But then the ra stop racism. Yeah. Why? Because they voted for racists. Yeah, well, you know, they don't know that. They figure it's just another white dude that they voted for. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's and that's that's it's it's kind of like you said it before, like identity politics is the thing that that gets people elected, you know what I mean? Like white 
Jewish, gay. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't even matter anymore. I'm a black lesbian woman, so vote for me or I should get the job. No, well, are you qualified? No. Well, then you shouldn't get the job. It's, no, but the ones that are qualified don't get don't get voted in. No, and I'm not saying. Listen, it's kind of like what, like I'm not saying Mastriano would have been better than Shapiro. I mean, I think he would have yes, been. Yes, he would have. But in the grand scheme of things, like it's got to be at least give it a try. It's got to be better than what's going on now within the city, within this state. Pittsburgh is just as bad. Like it's funny how like when you look at the map, the whole state's red except for Philly. Pittsburgh and Scranton Allentown area because that's where Joe's from and they're going to vote for Joe. Get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? Like, why, why are we falling for this nonsense? Well, New York was like that too. It was like uh, Buffalo, Long Island, like <laughs> New York City. And I think there was like another little section of New York State that was like uh, blue. Long Island itself, other than where Manhattan and the city is, was all red. Most of the state was red. It's it's disgusting. Well, and yet we allow it. But yet you like nothing they, we can do. There's gotta be. Don't say that, Dave. We're doing it now. The corruption. You have to get to the heart of the corruption, and you gotta you gotta take it out locally. It's got to be a grassroots movement locally, and you gotta start. You got to start in the school boards to get rid of these people. You got to get rid of the wokeness, and they're corrupt on top of it. Yeah, but like you said, no, we're, we're not getting. I mean, why do you think people go woke? Honestly, I, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Because they're corrupt. Oh, there's money behind it. Should we go yeah. woke? Make some money? No, monetize I mean, our YouTube page. That's can't even monetize my damn Instagram account because I said Bruce Jenner was a a man. It's a man, baby. Whether you so, like it or so not, I'm, I'm branded phobic. No, I agree with you. I'm, my issues are: how do we fix it? Donald Trump. Yeah, but how is he going to fix it if we can't even win the you states have, that we need to win? You have to keep exposing. You have to keep showing it. All right. Well, the state legislatures need to step up. And on that note, I guess we're out of here because I hear the background music. Background music is in. Listen, Patriot Podcast Network on your Roku devices, TVs. Hit it. Download it. It's an easy. It's just like adding an app to your phone. Nap. Mm, Patriot Cigar Company. There's five different brands or uh, cigars. I don't know. Something like that. You don't Orange. smoke, do you? No, I don't smoke. I should, maybe I'll start doing that. Start smoking some blunts in my Patriot Cigar. <laughs> my Patriot Cigars. Uh, orange Men at the checkout. No? Shouldn't do that? Orange Men at checkout. 15% off on all that. It's another great gift idea. You get a nice little box, too, if you get a uh, the variety pack or your sample pack. Hmm. Outlawed 10 for your first order products. Another patriotic apparel company. Holidays are coming. You need some quick gifts ideas? Gift ideas? This is it. Are they coming or just breathing heavy? Breathing heavy. All of it. Uh, like I said, Outlaw 10 at checkout. T20 Sanders for Redcon 1. All your supplemental products for hitting the gym. You know, New Year's going to be around the corner. You want to have your products stacked up. You ain't shit. <laughs> or you... You want to work off that turkey weight that's getting ready to come on next week. I'll work off the turkey neck. Turkey neck. There you go. Gobble, gobble. I know it's bulking season, but that doesn't mean we can't try to stay fit. And with that, we'll see you next time.